Hello there and welcome to another Skills Team podcast. Today we're going to be talking all about why we think it's a good idea for you to take breaks. So today I'm joined by Naomi Bowers Joseph, uh, the Senior Skills Officer and also my manager. And I am Alexander Wood, a Skills Co-Creator. And we are quite busy people, I'd say. Would you say the same thing, Naomi? I feel quite busy much of the time, yes. Yeah. And we're filming this currently in the COVID-19 situation. So we're working from home, as you can probably see. And we have to take a lot of breaks and we have to self-regulate just as any student would. Uh, I was a recent graduate, so I know all about taking breaks as a student. And it is really essential to take breaks. Um, So in this podcast, we're going to go through why you should take breaks, how you can work out what breaks to take and how long you should take breaks for. We're going to talk also about what you can do when taking breaks and a little bit of advice here and there for how you can plan your study breaks in. So Naomi, why do you think it's important to take breaks? It's, it's, we have so many of these questions that sound both very complicated and very simple all at the same time. And at the simple level, it's important to take breaks because otherwise you'll overwork and overload yourself. Mm. Um, there's more detail and more complicatedness to it than that. But at the end of the day, if you don't take breaks, certainly if I don't take breaks, I I will end up working too hard. I'll burn out. I won't be working, doing my best work. So the constant advice I get currently, especially in the current situation, is, Alex, have, have you taken breaks? Have you Make sure you take your breaks, by the way. Don't just work like a robot and just get your work done make sure you I had to, breaks. I had to send you an email didn't I yeah. but in writing Alex make sure you're taking breaks away from the screen and there is reasons for that and it's because of like Naomi said it's about staying sharp and keeping yourself effective not burning out and that's a great key thing as a student because if you do one assessment and you don't take any breaks and then you've got another one coming straight up afterwards you can burn out and so I think it's really important to try and take breaks to avoid that burnout to keep yourself fresh and to keep yourself enjoying what you're doing and not feeling, not not going into a situation where you could feel ill, because you can get ill by working too hard and you can stress yourself out at times. Um, but yeah, it really is important, isn't it? Uh, I think as well for maintaining your focus. I always, mm. um, I always when I come back from a break, as soon as I get back into it, I'm focusing and I've got my goal. I know what I'm doing. But without a break, I sort of it just take, sort of just goes on, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, I think, again, so we talk about this when we talk about proofreading, the importance of taking time between when you finish writing and when you start proofreading. And part of that is to almost sort of reset your mind mm. so you can look at it with fresh eyes. And that being able to take some time and just reset things and then come back to it can be really valuable at all stages of your studying. So if you're revising for an exam, for example, um, taking a break to let the things that you've thought about already settle in. This is I'm not in any way a scientist. This may not be how the brain works, but never mind. Um, let the things that you've thought about already settle in and then you've got space to either recap that um, or to think about some new things, to learn some new things. Um, if you're writing an assignment, it can be, I, I found when I was writing assignments, it's very easy to go down a rabbit hole and um, this, will get, this will shock everybody <laughs> and possibly get distracted and digress. Um, being able to take a break and come back to it with fresh eyes means that you can refocus and um, do a, a review of what you've written so far. Am I making sense? Am I still answering the question? All those things that we've talked about in lots of these podcasts, lots of these videos, taking a break lets you do so many of those things as part of your natural working process. So yeah, I agree, Naomi. I think it's really essential uh, to take breaks. And the thing, the reason why I like to take breaks is because it gives you a goal. So I know if I've got a break planned for 20 minutes from now, I know that I can keep working until that 20 minutes comes mm-hmm. and I'll be okay after. I'll, so I can work hard until then, take my break, and then use the time I've allotted. And I like doing that because then I have a, it's, I've got a plan. So then when I take the break, I'm not procrastinating. I don't feel guilty. I feel like I've earned this as a reward. Yeah. And I think that's quite important. That's really interesting. So as we've said, at the moment, we are in this situation where we are on lockdown. We're working from home. And at the moment, we don't know when that's going to end. And Mm. I am really struggling with that. I would find it easier to deal with a three-month lockdown that I know when it's going to finish 
compared to a month, but I'm not sure at any point during that month when it's going to end. And mm. that's something I'm struggling with at the moment is not knowing how long this is going, not knowing how long I have to do this for. So that's mm. that's the same feeling that you're describing, but on a, on a bigger scale. And then in, with regards to a study day, I I hadn't thought of that before, but I think that's a really good point to have given yourself something to work towards. If I can take a break in 20 yeah. minutes, then that will motivate me to work for 20 minutes. So with my current work calendar, I actually look at the things I'm doing and try and like, plan different lengths of time that I can put a break in. I'll talk about that a bit more later on in the podcast about study breaks and how you can plan those breaks. Um, but now I'm going to talk about really how often do we actually take the breaks because I was saying about how I do it for different lengths, but how often do you take breaks? Naomi, how often do you think you should take breaks? Oh, it will really depend on the kind of person you are, what you're yeah. doing. So I would take more breaks if I was doing something that take a lot of concentration yeah, um, I... than if I was doing something that I found came more easily to me. But then the risk is, I, I think actually how many other distractions are around the house might influence how many breaks I take. So mm. I've got my net pair of new boots arriving by courier today. At some point between two and four p.m., it's currently twenty past two. Everyone listening, um, the boots are arriving. So that is a real, that is genuinely, that's a real distraction for me. So if I take too many breaks today, I will just spend them all walking around in my new boots, treading them, wearing them in. You have to do this, Alex, with women's shoes. So that's a big <laughs> distraction for me. So I might allow myself fewer breaks today, in the knowledge that I might get easily distracted. Whereas on a day when there's not a pair of brand new boots arriving, um, I might allow myself more breaks. So it depends on your tasks and what your distractions might be. And you could use those as a reward for your work. So you can say, OK, I I want to spend 20 minutes walking around the house. The usual break for me would be 10 minutes. So I'm going to work double the length and try and get so I can have that reward. And so it's the carrot and the stick thing. And I often work towards that and work with that. So I, I as a student, used to use the Haribo theory where I stick like Haribo's in, it's not actually necessarily Haribo by the way, but I stick Haribo's or whatever sweets I had available uh, in my book and I'd read the sections. And so I'd plan out, okay, I've got 30 pages to read. I want to read these in two hours. Every so many pages, I get Haribo as a reward and I also take a break. Um, and that's what I did and it helped me get through. That's what I found worked for me. I thought it was a joke of the internet and tried. I don't do it now because Haribo isn't the best thing. I instead I just take a break it had like markers in um and but that's uh that's something that i do so trying to plan breaks out is quite useful but um as naomi said at the start how, how many breaks you take can depend on how who you are and how well you can work so for me i probably take i tend to take breaks at different levels again but depending on the complexity of the work but i will take uh i think fewer and often is better so then i'm fresh but because I know that if I have 20 minutes for a break, I'll watch a YouTube video and then I might want to watch another YouTube video. Mm. And that's a rabbit hole. So I know that if I can have less time than it takes me to watch a YouTube video, I can walk around and do other things that are productive. So really, it depends on yourself how many breaks you have and yeah. when you do take them. But try and take them at least once an hour or once every two hours, I think. I take one at least once an hour. I don't, I don't know about you, know, Amy. It, I'm, in all honesty, when I'm doing a working day, it's, uh, it's much more responsive to the situation. So I've got small children, yeah. so they call me away from the computer. Again, with this working from home situation, um, my children are at home as well. They're two and four, so they do demand things on a quite frequent basis. So I'm quite led by that at the moment. I think when I'm at work... In all honesty, it's often led by when I need more coffee. So that's quite a natural way of, of bringing breaks in. I, it takes me a certain length of time to drink a coffee. And when I get to the end of the coffee, I can cope for a bit. And then I think, oh, I need another coffee. And yeah. so I'll build breaks through that way. So, yeah, that's co measured, uh, breaks measured by drink. So I have the same thing. So I always have a drink of water. And whenever my water gets empty, I then go, OK, I need to fill it up. And then that's a break where I can walk. It's a short break. But it's still a break where I'm not focusing on my work, where I can relax for at least about a minute because I have to, I have it filtered, so so it gives me time to properly break. Mm -hmm. So I alluded to it in a bit in that sentence there 
about one some things you can do in your break. So Naomi, what things do you think you should and shouldn't do when you have it when you're having a break? I think you should do things that will get you moving. Um, you should do things that are different. So I've read certainly about, and I'm terrible for this, taking a break from my computer screen and staring at my phone screen is not a brilliant way of taking a break because just in terms of your eyes, all that kind of thing, not a good idea. So if you're doing something screen based, take a break that's not screen based. So variety mm -hmm. mixing things up and um, things that you shouldn't do again for me it's all it is <laughs> genuinely it's all about distraction and managing distractions um so not doing i try and avoid things that i know i will get distracted by so going for a walk for example is really good if you can just stick to a short walk mm. of the time you've allotted for your break um i remember once I was we were moving house um, and I was supposed to be packing up my room. It was when I was when I was a teenager, I was supposed to be packing up my room. Um, my sister had to organize me to do it because I hate packing. I hate moving house. I hate packing. So my sister was there making sure I did it. And I negotiated with her for um, an hour's break, I think. But my my downfall was I left the house. I went outside. I didn't come back for five hours. So that's so, procrastination then, isn't it, at that point? Yeah, and it's a real risk. Just, yeah, just, well, yeah. So we're going to do staying a, focused. So we're going to do a podcast next week. So next week's episode of the podcast is going to be all about beating procrastination. So we'll be sharing some tips on how to avoid that and hopefully talking about how Naomi can get around her fears of packing. So I think it's really important then to try and do things that you know aren't procrastination and do things where you can limit yourself. So, for example, if you're going to go for a walk, are you going to go for a walk and then into a place where you'll see all your friends and then you'll get distracted? So, but another thing Naomi pointed out there is about doing different things. So I think that's quite important. So with my breaks, I often spend them listening to podcasts um, because I'm usually staring at a screen. But if I can listen to an audio podcast, I then don't, I'm not staring at a screen. I can be outside walking and learning something new whilst still feeling that I'm doing things because I always like to be doing things and I don't like to be doing nothing so I listen to some sort of audio podcast or something like that in my breaks to keep myself doing something but also not doing the same thing so if I've been listening so if I'm editing a video for example I'm listening to audio constantly and trying to just pick that audio out so when I edit in this podcast with the breaks I take then I won't want to listen to more audio again because I'm having a break from listening to audio so what you do yeah. really just differ depending on what you're doing. Um, I think when you're studying and you've got um, multiple modules, multiple assignments that you're preparing for, and particularly if you're feeling stressed and anxious about that, I, I it's difficult to justify the time to oneself to take a break. And I think there is definite benefit to mixing up which assignment you're focusing on for example yeah, and is. the method of doing it alex is looking at me like i'm about to steal one of the points he's written down no. in his plan which is no you aren't go for no. it talk. this is for the next podcast keep going this is great so <laughs> so whilst so they say this, the phrase is a change is as good as a rest isn't it so i think it is important to have breaks where you are not doing anything study related but you can build in breaks from one assignment, say, by working on another one, particularly if it's different methods. So if you have an exam and a, um, to revise for and an assignment to write, you might write your assignment on your laptop, looking at your screen, and then take a break from that by revising for your exam, by talking out loud to a friend. Yeah. And that gives you a break from the task. It gives you a break from the mode of doing it, but it still keeps you studying and that can still keep you on track if, you've got, if you are very busy, got lots of deadlines coming up. So yeah, I completely agree with that. I call it productive procrastination. So you are procrastinating from one task, but you're doing so productively. So you're mm. looking at something else. So I often do it where if I'm taking a break from work, for example, I might read my emails that I have as a student, or I might read something is for Game Potion or for the charity, the trustee role as a charity. And actually, I found it quite odd how just by switching up, going from work mode, which I've been doing all day, to all of a sudden doing similar things, but slightly different for uh, as a charity trustee, all of a sudden I was I was able to keep going. And I was like, well, 
I've been struggling to read when I've been at work reading these skills books, these podcasts. But then outside of work, I'm fine reading all these papers. And it's the same thing, reading. But different context, completely everything's different. And because it's a change, I'm still getting work done. So I'm still procrastinating for one task, but I'm making progress on another. So it's still using your time well. And yeah, I was going to talk about that in the next podcast, but I think it's really important. And it's a great thing to do use breaks for is to switch it up and to and to do things on different projects, especially when you've got multiple deadlines and you don't feel like you could justify a break. Um, my entire life, that's how I operate, by the way. <laughs> just switch but it is po- important to get some breaks in there, I think. That are breaks. Um, no matter, that are actual breaks. Yes, actual breaks are important. Um, but yeah, for those, I would... I would say what Naomi said, go outside, have a change of scenery, especially as a student. So I used to live in student accommodation and I would literally, at this time of year in April, I'd lock myself in my room and only go outside to go shopping. That's not the best way of doing it. Um, try and, when I take breaks, I go to the kitchen. I go outside just so that I could actually ha- have a different change of scenery because otherwise I would be in my bedroom all day long, except for when I'm cooking and shopping. Yeah. I think, again, we need to recognise in the current situation, there are, depending on where people are located in the in the world, people might be um, listening to this from lots of different places and lots of different situations. We've got lots of restrictions on um, what people can and can't do at the moment. Yeah. So I think, firstly, we should we should put on our, our professional hats and say very much abide by the restrictions in your area. Um, but also... <laughs> Think about how you can make the best out of those restrictions that you're operating under. So um, here in the UK, we are encouraged to go out for one form of exercise in a day. So think about when that might be, um, when it makes most sense to do that in terms of your your day that you've got planned and the studying and the other tasks that you've got to do. Um, And if you can't go out for a walk, think about other things you can do. So I read somewhere, in fact, we it was something that came through from work, um, how you just even just opening a window so you've got a breeze coming onto your face can really help in terms of widening up your perspective in that time. So think about how you can make the best use of the situation that you're in. Yeah, and I think that also boils down to um, another point that I want to talk about in this podcast is about when you plan your breaks. So I would always say to plan your breaks around when you think that you are going to be less productive. So for me, I find I am far more productive in the morning than I am at at night. So in the morning, I will take far less breaks on the basis that I can just power through. But in the afternoon, I find that I have to have breaks a lot more regularly to keep my focus. Uh, Probably because I'm tired from powering through in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But for me, if I was going for a walk, I would do so in the afternoon to keep myself fresh rather than in the morning when actually I know that I don't need to break as much then. So it really is when you're most productive, try to try and plan breaks around when you might not be as productive or and try and find plan your work generally around when you are productive. Mm. At least that's what I find. So how would you plan your uh, breaks then, Naomi? I'm very much the same as you, very much a morning person. Um, generally, if I'm going to achieve anything, it's in the morning. Um, yeah. So, yes, keep certainly keep tasks that I need a lot of concentration for for the morning. Um in terms of when I plan them in, for me, is it also it bases around food, food and food and coffee. Yes. That, that <laughs> when am sense. I going to be hungry? How long can yeah. I go without a snack? Because if I don't plan in a break to go to the kitchen and get a snack, for example, I will go to the kitchen and get a snack anyway. And then I might be finding that I'm having more breaks and more time away from my work yeah. than if I had planned in a time to do that. Um so yeah that is a big yeah. factor for me it's the whole line that i was thinking of earlier uh, which is it's all part of the plan so if you can say okay i planned to have lunch now you don't feel that you're bad for eating yeah. because it's really important and i know a lot of students who i've met over the past couple of years as a student they would say i don't have time for lunch and i'm like you yeah. need to make time for lunch it's crucial because you will perform better when you yeah. are when you've eaten same with exams Make sure you eat because you perform better. What I found when I was studying, and I really struggled with it, is this idea that because there are no fixed hours, if you're at home writing assignments or you've got, you know, when your lectures are, but you know you need to do work outside of those, there's no fixed hours. 
and I felt a lot of pressure from myself to be to be I, I never felt like I was doing enough I never felt like I was studying enough me too. and that was from me that was that was from me it wasn't anyone else telling me but I and one of the things I love about um my current job is that it has fixed working hours and I I, <laughs> I the fact that I I know that during those fixed out working hours I am at work and I work very hard and then outside those fixed hour working hours I'm not at work and that gives I give myself then the permission not to be working and that for me is a huge thing really difficult again in this current situation and particularly given I'm juggling the girls as well so if my children take up an hour of my time during the day I need to make sure that if I'm making that back in the evening I'm only making back the hour because again that that guilt that feeling of I have not been working enough will get to me and I might be at risk of working two hours in the evening to make up for an hour missed during the day so I have to be quite strict with myself um, yeah. and certainly I've really struggled as a student with that very much so. I, I struggled as well and still struggle uh, on the basis that I will do the work and try and spend as much time as I can on it. And I would often work. I, I always I used to work in nine till nine day. That's Gosh. what I used to aim for um, as a student. That's why That's I now intense. feel like the time just goes. But I'm doing lots of different things. And as a student, I would never just study. I actually thought, thought studying was the thing I did least. So it meant because I was mixing it up by doing lots of different things, I was never in that nine till nine doing the same thing. And actually, I'll be honest, Naomi, I'm currently doing the same hours anyways. I'm just doing 8 30 till 9 or later uh now on the basis that after work i'm doing different work um, yeah. yeah can we just clarify for the listeners of the podcast alex is not doing i'm not paying alex to do um days that then mean he has to work 12 hour days alex is doing non-work related work non-paid employment alex. work alex does that to himself but with lots of breaks in there and um, I know I feel quite guilty, especially as a student, because I used to take a lot of breaks and sometimes my breaks were for a, long, a lot of time. And especially some days where like I was really not productive, I would think that's that was it. I'd failed everything because I'd been procrastinating. But as far as I'm aware, I didn't. But yeah. when I could properly get my head around things and have a clear goal, I'd procrastinate less. And your brain needs time to think about things subconsciously. Again, I'm not a scientist. However, I know that I will be doing the washing up, thinking about something else. I'll be doing something with my hands, doing the washing up, not thinking about anything work related. And my brain will suddenly pop up with the answer to a question that I was thinking about earlier in the day. And yep. there's a lot of benefit. I know there is science behind this. I don't know any of it. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a lot of benefit to, to allowing your brain to do that wurgling away behind the scenes. Yeah, so I always recommend doing things like that as well. Uh, and starting, the earlier you can start the work, it means that the more you can juggle that and have the time to think, and also the more time you can take breaks without feeling stressed that you are taking breaks. Uh, so yeah, to rein it back in, uh, and to conclude this podcast, really what we've been discussing so far is that it's not it's okay to have breaks as a student. Actually, it's a good thing. Make sure that you do actually have the breaks so that you can stay sharp and you can stay ma at maximum effectiveness. Um when you plan them, plan them depending on how you study and how you feel that you are best suited to study. Uh, when you are taking breaks, make sure you try to spend time doing things that are different. So don't spend time watching Netflix in the same seat that you're in. Try and go to a different place, go to at least a different room or go outside and do different things, use different skills. I'll say for a bit, just in terms of going to a different room, again, that's something I'm really noticing at the moment. I am working. You can just see the walls behind me if you're watching this on the video podcast. But I am working from my dining room. If I have lunch in my dining room, that I really struggle with that. So normally I would naturally have lunch at the dining room table, but that's literally two feet away from me right now. And I'm having to have lunch in a separate room because it's too much of being in the same room. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. I have to have lunch not in my bedroom. <laughs> If you are feeling so, if you are feeling stressed when you're studying, and so much so that you don't feel like you can take a break, try and do something different in terms of trying to focus on something a different task using productive procrastination. That can be a really good tool to take a break, at least do something different. It's something I use quite a lot to manage my time and my own experience. It's something that Naomi said that she does as yeah. well. That she does as well. 
and also remember the support that is in place um, from the university if you are feeling very stressed. So the wellbeing service, for example, is there and you can get in touch with them um, or talk to the student, the, the union of students. They, I think, can help you out as well. So, But yeah, I agree with that. Overall, taking breaks is really important. Make sure you have time to do it because it will keep you sharp, it will keep you focused and it will give you something to look forward to. So do take breaks and do study, but make sure that they are regulated and that they aren't too long to deem to become procrastination. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. In the next podcast that we are doing, we're going to talk all about how you can beat procrastination if it does occur. And we're going to talk about some strategies, both from students and from the skills team themselves. So hopefully you'll tune to that next episode. That'll be on the YouTube channel next week. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. Bye.